Hello and welcome back everyone, I'm Blue Mana Banana and this is Aurora 4X, our space strategy game. In the last episode, I made the jump to a, you know, a double jump actually. We jumped from Seoul to Bull 359 and from Bull 359 to this system over here that you can see here. It's called Forte Eridiani and it's a trinary system. We have a, you know, the primary sun or, you know, called A. Forty Eridiani A. In the middle of this, it's orbited by Eridiani B, which is in K. Well, in turn, then orbited by Eridiani C. And one thing that is really interesting, I think, as soon as we open this up, come on, is that Eridiani B is only fifteen thousand thousand, fifteen thousand. Um, I don't know. Distances, units, I don't actually know what kind of diameter this is. Um, yeah, well, big. While this is actually 500,000 big. 15,000 versus 500,000 units. Still, I don't know what distance. So, it's really, really interesting that the smaller thing is more than twice as heavy than the other one and that's what i actually really love about you know astronomy and space because things are so deceptive sometimes you know you have a gigantic object but it has such a little density that actually something that is way smaller can still be more massive and that's usually something that you you don't really have on earth if you think about it i mean yeah sure you could have something made of i don't know plastic some kind of really low density plastic and um, a, I don't know, uh, the same thing made out of lead or something and then you're like, whoa, that is, that, that, that's deceptive, that's deceptive. That's way heavier, even though it has the same size. But still, it's, it's not really very common that you run around and try to, you know, just lift something made of lead. Well, I'll, of course, if you go to the gym or something, but but still, it's not really something that you do do all the time or see all the time. I mean, I just okay. Oh, nothing happened. Good, good. Um, it's just because I I actually had this once in uh, one of one one of my laboratory classes, or laboratory classes, where. We had some kind of small boxes that were like uh, five centimeters by five centimeters by two centimeters or something like that. Um, or for the guys that use uh, another system than the better metric one, uh, about two inches by two inches by a little bit less than than a half an inch. And those were filled with graphite. Where uh, I think it was an aluminum box, aluminum shell. And uh, one was filled with a graphite block, and uh, the other one... Ooh, crap, we, sh we need to go back now. Yeah, we should go back. So one, once again, one of these boxes was filled with, with graphite, and the other one was filled with lead. And I, it was some kind of, um, you know, an experiment with, for, um, I think it was um, X-ray absorption. I'm not 100% not sure, maybe it was neutron absorption, neutron scattering, something like that. I, I can't 100% remember there, but um, you could do both. Uh, but the thing is, if you take, if you, you, you can't really tell them apart because they're, they're just aluminum shells. The only thing that you can tell them apart is, from look, when you look at them, is of course by uh, the Sharpie marker on, on the back of it, which says either C for you know, graphite or carbon, and um, you know the the PB for uh, for 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 lead, and it's it's really interesting when you you know when you mix them up, and you kind of think you're you will pick up the the graphite one, and you actually grab the the lead one, and then you just try to pick it up, and it, whoa, that that's that, that's way heavier than I expected. Oh yeah, that must be the lead. Um, it's really interesting when you do that. It's it's really it's really weird. But it doesn't really happen that often. It was 
that you actually grab something and you think, whoa, that's way heavier than I thought it would it would be. Maybe you know when when you could have when it could happen is you know, when you try try to pick up some some kind of milk or something or milk carton carton of milk where you don't really can uh, where you can't see if it's full or not. You think ah I just bought this this has to be full but I don't know your roommate already drank it. Uh, just try to pick it up and just lift it way uh, with may way too much force because you thought it would be way heavier than it actually is but yeah that that's something i don't even know how we got to this was it because yeah deceptively tiny objects that are really heavy in space weird yeah i, I can talk about bull crap all day long all day long all day all day long But, you know, sometimes you just don't have a choice and the only thing that you can do is talk bullcrap while the game tries to decide um, whether it, you know, just advances time or not. Come on, do it. It's getting a little bit slow, I, I think. Why aren't you... Was it just... was it not a five-day chunk? That's interesting. I thought it would have been. I wanted to move to Wolf 359. Come on. But this this system looks really interesting to me. I mean, it really depends on um, what kind of you know minerals we find uh, we find. But I think one of the axes we that we you know exp did the most. You know that we tried to do the most in the last episodes was explore. Um, closely followed mostly by exploit, I think, because we're trying to exploit all all the mineral deposits. And um, as soon as we we've done that, not really much uh, going on in case of uh, what's it called again? Exterminate. Yeah, explore, exploit, expand. Yeah, we, I, I think yeah that 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 is actually the the order that we did explore mostly then exploit we did some expansion but not that much and we we definitely did nothing in form of exterminating anyone so I'm pretty pretty good actually let's take the jump survey task group and let's jump back to wolf three five nine and then go to the soul jump point go for a squadron transit to soul. And then go back to Earth and refuel. And maybe even go for a maintenance, because why the heck not? So let's see if a five-day chunk now works. Maybe there's some, some battle going on, because we can't seem to really advance time here. Once again, I feel like I'm late to the party. But it happens. I mean, it happens. Okay, so this system now is empty again. Well, it's not really empty, but our ships have left to Wolf 359, which is great. We still have this wreck here, which makes me feel rather uncomfortable. Uh, we are moving to the jump point. With the oh, wait a second, did we find another one? No, that's the sole jump point, isn't it? Yeah. Most likely. Let's take a look at the graph wave just to make sure it has enough. Okay, it has enough fuel. Awesome. So the graph wave can just do its own thing. As soon as it has finished all of this, we will pick it up again and bring it back home. And then it has to go to the Barnard Bar Bar Star System. Yeah, uh, exactly. That was the name. And then just jump around and find. The jump points over there, and as soon as this is done, we have still no, still Alpha Centauri left, and um, Lumen, the completely empty, crappy system that we actually don't want to, but maybe it leads to you know something better. You never know. You never know. And 30-day chunks actually take quite a lot of time. 
Oh, we have a new Nectar Research Lab. That means a new one has been built. Awesome. And a Sea Whiz on the Spearhead has, you know, has uh, had a maintenance failure. But it has been, or it's, it has been repaired, I think. Doesn't really matter. We don't need the Sea Whiz at the moment. It's fine. Let's allocate this to the research. I don't think it does anything at research. Nah, it's just five days. Doesn't really matter there. It's another one day chunk. Wow, that does nothing. Okay, let's go there then. Just five days is better than... It's one more tick in instead of nothing. Great. So these guys are all doing all right. The ten thuns, uh, ten thuns, ten thousand tons. Of capacity has been added to a shipyard. Let's take a look at that. And yep, we need another 10,000, please. Because I think most of our, you know, commercial ships will be around 30,000, maybe 50,000 tons. Um, the changeling, for example, the, the terraformers that are done in some one and a half months, about some, something over that. They have, I think, 50,000 tons. Also, the constructions, the, the jump construction, jump gate construction ships have somewhere around 57,000 tons. So, there's a lot that we need to take into account. Alright, let's take a, take a look at all the, you know, incoming asteroids. Temple 1 is coming in. And it is actually closer than Saturn at the moment. That is actually not too bad. Let's take a look at it. So Temple 1, is it worth it? Corbomite and Venderite, not really, no. We should take a look at Corundium, really. Uh, Corundium, great. Oh, okay. Antagon, that is, that's not too bad. Tisbe, also not too bad. A Thisbe, I don't know. Create a colony. Let's take a look at that. That looks actually rather promising. Oh, and it is actually a non-moving thing that is also pretty good. Let's, let's go ahead and go to Antagon and then to Thisbe. Oh no, the other way around. I think we need we need some more corundium for mines. So is any of our No, he's still busy. And he's almost done. Okay. So much for that. Let's go in a 30 day chunk then. Yeah, yeah. The the javelin, spearhead and shaft are getting a little bit cranky because they exceeded their um, the deployment time, the planned deployment time. Well, that's fine. Oh, excuse me, I had to yard there. Oh, great, Shani has actually completed their orders. That is awesome. So, do we have any infrastructure on Earth. Yeah, quite some actually. And those guys are close to the population cap. And it'll take so much longer, uh, well, it will take so much time still to make Mars into, um, into a breathable atmosphere. Crap. Yeah, it doesn't matter. This be it is. I think we need some more materials. So you, Earth, get some automated mines, move it to Thisbe, unload them, move back to Earth, refuel, and repeat. 24 times. Oops. That's zero times, 24 times. Awesome. Then, since you're on Earth again, up one more mass driver, move it over, unload it. Come on, where is it? There it is. And move back to Earth. Awesome. Refuel. 
And there you go, you have your orders planned out. Nice. These guys, I should... Ah, okay, cool. Aren't we moving... Wait a second, where's Atlas moving its stuff? Oh, to Channing. Oh, that is not good. We need to... Oh, we're getting more than we actually want there because the, the civilian contract is still up and running and I think they actually picked up on that. Yeah, they're moving stuff over. Let's cancel the mass driver because I don't really need it. Anything else? Let's, let's go through the mining and maintenance destinations just to make sure that we actually have all them all of them set. See Callisto did not have those set. Rhinemuth also not really. I mean we stockpiled so it's not that we lose stuff but still. Wild it's not done yet. I think that was a civilian uh, there's still a, still a civilian contract. Also, I'm not saying that they need to do Okay, that is great, and Chenik is getting is getting there. Good, good. Everything looks fine. Almost. I mean, as fine as it can be. Let's look at Barnard Star. Oh, we found some stuff. Cobamite, Tritanium, Cobamite, Tritanium, Corun. 400,000 Corundium. And it is at an okay-ish. Um, accessibility that is freaking awesome yeah we need we need to go there and I think Barnet Star A2 will be our colony because it's easier to maintain is it yeah it's slightly easier it's not that great though hmm it would be easier to it would be easier to get um this one done because it al it already has some at no, okay forget it it's basically the same basically the same hmm yeah i think we're going to, i think barnes sorry let, let's take the one that has more um that there's more duranium yeah, okay, let's let's go A A1. Oh, A2, sorry. Because Duranium is you know, as you might know, the basically this the steel. So it's the basic, you know, stuff that you need to the basic material that you need to build things. So I think I think Barnet Star A2 will be the next colony that we that we expand to, or the next planet that we expand to. Looks good. Perfect, I like it. Okay, back to Earth, and I think back to a 30-day chunk, because we don't really have a lot to do. Other than wait, of course. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, I need to maintain our... Um, javelins and our Illuminator class. Because I think those guys... its I think it's better to, to do it now, rather than have them... Accumulate accumulate um, maintenance problems, and yeah, great. And then we ha don't have them, you know. Oh, it's maintenance, ma it's, the maintenance clock is at zero. Okay, it doesn't really matter then. Uh, okay, that seems to be a shuffle. Is anything interesting here? Callum Forster died in an accident, but he was unassigned. Uh, research has commenced. That's good. We got another research lab. And our changelings are done. Great. Oh, they have finished their overhaul. I actually started it anyways. I was smart about that. Great. I usually don't... I'm usually not smart. You know, I'm, I'm, I usually F stuff like that up. That's actually why I, I try to... Uh, look it up again. Did I do that? No, I didn't. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Oh, I did. Wow, that is interesting. Got another research lab that is also pretty good. The magnetic confinement fusion drive is being researched. It will take another eight years still, but there's nothing nothing that we can do about that. I um, mean, you know, our power and propulsion guys suck. I mean, we could 
you know, he has 20 lamps with a 15% bonus. Um, she has, what, 25 lamps with a 5% bonus, so I think he's better. And she has 10 lamps with 10% bonus, so either way, it will take us ages. Because we just have bad luck when it comes to having power and propulsion guys. Anyways, uh, let's take the shipyard task group. Let's remove the changeling and the other one. Oops, forgot that we jumped to the other task group then. The doors need to be detached from the shipyard as well. Terraformer changeling. Let's go over here. Add the doors to the same group. Um, we can delete that then. Not rename. Delete the task group, it's empty anyways. And this one will be renamed to, I don't know, Terraformers. Done. So the Terraformers, we only have two at the moment. We could add some more if we wanted to, but I think two is fine for now. Um, why did I close that again? Every time I'm like, oh, I need to give them orders. Then I close this and I think, hey, wait a second, this was the same screen. Why did I close it? Mars, move to. Great. So these guys will move to Mars. It will take them some time because they're freaking slow, but once they're there, everything is going to be all right. Hopefully. I didn't even notice that this is actually, as you, actually some kind of box. Hmm, interesting. Yep, terraformers are there. So now we should see an increase in the terraforming rate. Yeah, as you can see, terraforming installations, effective ter terraforming modules in orbit, including the commander bonuses, is 4.7. So we get another 0.7, I think, from, um, you know, the assigned commanders to the ships. And now we produce uh, 0.7. 0155 atmospheres of nitrogen per year, I think. Yeah, annual production. So it will still take us quite some time, but it's better than nothing, is it? All right, now there's something that I almost forgot to do. Oh yeah, we've been converting mines, that's fine. Uh, as soon as we're done, I think we should build five more mass drivers. They're freaking expensive though. Our neutronium supply is going, uh, is getting dangerously low. And after we built the mass drivers, I think we need some more installation, uh, some more infrastructure. Hmm. I think it's 180 per 1 million, is it? No, 200 still. Well, that sucks. Let's build 800 infrastructure then. On Earth, of course. And then 800, fine. We'll take some time, but... Obviously we have nothing better to do but queue some stuff up. I think it's better to queue it up than not doing it, because then it, the ch chances are that you have um, idle labs or idle production. And I, I, I mean, it's not that bad when it comes down to production. Uh, idle research labs, on the other hand, are pretty pretty bad. Don't want that. All right. So I think this is going on for quite some time now. So I, I think we're going to make a cut here. Think about what's going on and what will go on in the next episodes. And mostly, I think I will just do some stuff off camera. And, you know, just try and build up our, you know, our research a bit. Our infrastructure needs to be increased. They're trying to get some more mines so we can exploit the system a little bit more. Maybe we get some jump ships. That should be a good idea. Jump, sorry, jump gate ships that construct a jump gate on this side of the, uh, the system. Because Barnard Star is, I think, ripe for the taking. We should do this rather soon. And um, yeah, hopefully we don't run into too many trouble or too many troubles. Or too much trouble, I should say. 
uh, while we are surveying all the jump points here. I think 40 Eridiani is also really nice. And so is Wolf 359 actually. So if we can pick up um, this planet as a military outpost, I wouldn't be opposed to that. So I think in between episodes I start to construct a constructor ship, a you know jump gate construction ship, and maybe we start to, you know, build some jump gates here and there. I think the three main candidates are Barnard Star, Wolf 359, and from Wolf 359 to Eridiani, but first we need to clear Eridiani out. Make sure that there's nothing nothing there that could harm us. Anyways, that's the plan for the future. And if you like what you saw today, then please consider pressing the like button. It helps me out a great deal, and I really do hope that I see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and as always, auf Wiedersehen.